Steve Poland here, and this week I'm really excited to show you something that has been in the works for a while. But first, I want to give you the backstory. My 125 gallon display tank has been a mainstay on this channel ever since I started filming videos. The stock has changed, the hardscape has changed, but this thing has been my pride and joy ever since I got it. But for the last few months, I've been on the lookout for something bigger. I know, it's ridiculous. But I see these bigger tanks and they look so good. I guess you could call it tank envy. So with these bigger tanks, you generally have a few options. The most common sizes are 150, 180, and 210 slash 220. So I kept an eye out. And I looked at prices online, and I looked at posts on Craigslist, but I never saw anything that I thought had potential. But then a couple of months ago, I saw a post for a 220 at a reasonable price. The picture was horrible, but I went to see it anyway. And while I knew it would need some TLC, it seemed like it would work. It came with the standard six foot black pine stand that you see a lot of places. The guy was moving, so I made a pretty low offer, and he took it. Once I looked at it, I realized quickly that it was actually a 210 made by AGA about 10 years ago. The initial cleanup was easy, but after 10 years, the silicone on any tank is reaching the end of its life. So I decided to reseal it. I removed all the old silicone and taped up the corners and sides. It didn't turn out perfect, but for my first time, it wasn't too bad. I let it cure for a full week and filled it up for a leak test. I let it sit for another full week and fortunately it was watertight. But I just couldn't stop worrying about it leaking or worst case, blowing out on me. And in fact, I even had a couple of nightmares about exploding tanks. Fortunately, I found out about a brand new Marineland 220 being sold locally for a pretty good price. So I decided to sell the 210 and buy the 220. I had the 220 delivered, which was a new experience for me and worth every penny. They dropped it off right in my living room. The first step for me was painting the back of the tank black. I've shown this a few times and it's very simple. First I taped up the sides just as a precaution. I then used a flat black latex paint and did four coats. I started with one coat long ways. Then once it dried I came back to do another coat short ways. I repeated this process again, and once it was done, I was left with a solid black background. I then flipped the tank 90 degrees to paint the bottom in the same manner. The end result was a simple but effective way to achieve the look that I prefer for my display tanks. One other bit of prep that I did for this project was bracing the floor beneath the tank. It sits perpendicular to my floor joists and close to a foundation wall, which is ideal but this will help since a 220 weighs nearly a thousand pounds more than a 125. I bought two adjustable jack posts and a 4x4 beam. I attached the beam to the joists and then set the posts in place and twisted the adjustment screws. I'll sleep a lot better knowing that this is in place. Then, finally, came the day of the switch. The first step was to remove the canopy from the 125 and move it out of the way. Then I removed the lids, LED light, and overflow box, but left the filters running. I wanted the filters to be stopped for as short a window as possible during this transition. The next step was to remove the rocks and place them out of the way. Even though I just did a deep cleaning of this tank a couple months ago, there was still quite a bit of waste that kicked up from under those rocks. 
Since I knew I would be reusing the sand, I wanted to remove as much of that waste as possible before transferring it. So once all the rocks were out, I turned on the python and did a bit of cleaning. Then it was time to move the fish. As many of you know, directly opposite this 125 is my 90 gallon grow out tank. It's heavily filtered, and while not an ideal long term environment for this many fish, I knew it would be feasible to house them temporarily while switching out the big tanks. Moving the fish didn't end up being that difficult, though I could have made it easier on myself by taking out more of the water first. But again, I wanted to leave the filters running. These fish sure do hate to be caught. My tetrastigma even decided to bury himself down in the sand in an attempt to hide. In the end, all the fish were moved over successfully. It was around this time that my reinforcements showed up, in the form of my buddy John, aka Maximus Aquatics. John is a great guy with an awesome YouTube channel, which I will link to down in the description. He has great tanks and his videos are hilarious. So at this point, since everything was out of the tank, it was time to turn off the filters and drain the rest of the water. You may have noticed how bad my filter intakes and returns look here. These are actually my backups. My regular parts were pulled out of the tank so that I could do some work on them. But more on that in a future video. I used my 1300 gallon per hour pump here, so draining the tank went pretty quickly. I stopped a couple of inches from the bottom because I wanted to get the sand wet. A lot of beneficial bacteria live in the sand, and my goal was to keep it all alive if possible. Removing the sand was not super fun, but having several buckets helped a lot. The next step was removing all the filters and other equipment so that we could move the old tank and stand. This is more work than you would expect and having a buddy to help out is really nice.
With all the equipment out of the way, it was time for the heavy lifting. The tank was easy. A 125 isn't all that heavy for two people to carry. The old stand was way overbuilt though and weighed much more than the tank. Still, it wasn't too bad. We carried them out to the garage to be stored until they are sold. Now moving the new stand in was easy. These black pine stands are nice, but they're really light. Once it was in the room, I measured to make sure it was the right distance from the wall and level. Then came the part that neither of us was looking forward to, moving the 220 into place. John had a couple of furniture dollies that we threw underneath it just to save us some work getting it into the room. This is when I started to realize just how much bigger this tank was than the old one. Ultimately, it wasn't terrible getting the tank up onto the stand, and once it was there, we made some minor adjustments and checked it again to make sure it was level. Lucky for John, this meant he was done for the day, and I got started on something I had been waiting so long for, setting up the new tank. First I added the old sand and a couple of bags of new sand that I had rinsed the night before. Then I put the rocks back in place. It's crazy how much smaller they look in the 220. Then, the moment of truth, starting the fill. If you're wondering about the blue bowl, this is something that I recommend when filling a tank that has sand in it. It prevents the water from splashing on the sand as much, which helps with the initial cloudiness. Unfortunately, you can never completely prevent it, which you'll see here shortly. With the water starting to fill, I made some adjustments to the rocks, and started some modifications to my filtration setup. Since this tank is so much taller, I had to switch out some of the hoses for longer pieces. It took a long time to fill, but fortunately there were no leaks. I would have been surprised if there were since this tank was brand new, but you never know.
With the tank full, I turned on the filters, added some Seachem clarity, and began to move the fish to their new home. Then it was time for a few final steps, like adding the glass tops and lights. I don't have a canopy for this tank yet, as they seem to be tough to find, so I'll probably be making my own at some point. After a quick scrub to remove a bit of the dust from the sand, I was finally done for the day. And now, a few days later, this is how the tank is looking. I couldn't be happier with it. It's one thing to see a big tank like this in videos or in a store, but to see it in my own home is just amazing. The filtration seems to be doing a great job so far. I'm running the Eheim 2250, two Eheim 2217s with DIY external heaters attached, and then a Fluval FX5. The water is crystal clear. You'll be seeing this tank a lot in the future, and hopefully you enjoyed seeing the process that I went through to make it happen. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if this is your first time here at my channel, then I'd love to have you subscribe, because each week I bring you a new video showing my experiences in the aquarium hobby. I give updates on my tanks, review products, show you DIY projects, and share tips and tricks to help you take your tank to the next level. Hit subscribe to follow along. Have a good one.